all the all the people back home is not the worst part. Um, you always want to reiterate what I just said. <laughs> this is gonna be like a test. <laughs> Whether you're paying attention on someone's back. <laughs> so what did I say so far? In my long ramble. What the syllabus. What things are important to know. I don't, I don't want to give the whole shit. Yeah, yeah, so we're not supposed to have students in our office, so there will not be any office hours. Did I actually open that up? Yes, I did. Cool. <laughs> I don't really like technology, so, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, not holding regular office hours. You can contact me via email. I'm going to include my cell phone. You can text me, uh, and we can meet. So that is, that is something that was missed. Talked a little bit about the texts, uh, make sure that you order this book on the syllabus, uh, Patricia Hill Collins, uh, Black Feminist Stop, order it on Amazon, it's cheaper than if you get it through the bookstore. All of the texts are gonna be available online. Sorry to make you guys go through this again. Um, and that pretty much brings us up to speed. So, uh, so yeah, so uh, recommendations for student success. Uh, attend class either electronically or in person. Uh, interact with me if you're confused about things. Uh, do every assignment. I do not have a ton of assignments. Uh, they are a series of larger assignments that are worth more points. So, so do, not, uh, um, do not skip assignments, right? And like, like I said, always feel comfortable contacting me. I'm sure you guys have seen this fast face mask policy fair amount already, right? Because we're all supposed to include it in all of our syllabus. No? Oh, it's supposed to be in everybody's syllabus. Uh, you're, you're required to wear face masks in all of your classes at all times. Um, you're supposed to also in any other public space, right? And this is basically a statement of why that is, right? Uh, we're all protecting each other. Uh, if we don't practice that, it's very likely we will not be able to stay open. Uh, you know, for the whole semester, again, you guys were here last spring, nobody like that, so hopefully we can get through. So, okay, attendance. Attendance is now supposed to be the same in all of your classes as well. Uh, we're no longer requiring attendance in the same way. You know, uh, there's going to be a lot of people, as we've already noted, who cannot always come. So we're going to kind of rotate in or out. I might you know, either test positive or come in contact at some point, and have, we might have to just go on to Blackboard Collaborate for a couple of weeks uh, while, I, while, I, uh, while I quarantine. So, so yeah, in and out, and uh, something that's always been a part of my policy, if you're sick, don't show up. Thanks. Uh, that was my attendance policy before. I'm a bit of a germaphobe. Nobody seems to seem to follow it before. I hope everyone will this semester. <laughs> <laughs> don't come if you're sick. Um, in any way, shape, or form, I don't really want you here. Uh, you can watch the video, and you know, be uh, uh, I like your presence, but if you're sick, you know. Okay, um, academic honesty. I'm sure you've seen this a lot in your career. Don't cheat. I always catch a few people for cheating on uh, a semester. Uh, and usually it's accidental. So that's also like, I do have a lot of stuff going through, uh, like safe assign. Uh, so I will be able to see if you, so be really careful about doing stuff like pulling from a text and not changing the words. Uh, Cause like you'll have an entirely original paper with two random sentences that are directly plagiarized, right? And that's, and so you gotta be careful about stuff like that. There's a lot of accidental plagiarism. More than I've ever really taught at least, at least at this institution, any like purposeful plagiarism. Um, I did catch it back when I was at UT, an act of like purposeful plagiarism, and it was actually a presentation. And so I was listening, I was like, this just doesn't sound like something this person would write. So I started typing into, I had my laptop, started typing the words in. He was literally just reading off of Wikipedia. 
Like word for word, just <laughs> like I was kind of proud that I've been caught that. Even though, even though I don't like getting people in trouble, like I'm not I'm not looking to catch you guys or something like that. It's just, I thought it was really actually quite funny. Okay, uh, so for our our assignments, we're going to have two take-home examinations. Uh, these will be given. You'll have weeks to finish them. Uh, they will be questions drawn from our, our readings and, uh, and our, our class discussions. They're usually, no, they don't really have right or wrong answers, and they're more just meant to have you engage again, you know. Um, so, I mean, you can lose points on them if you, or if they're disconnected from the readings, don't show a connection in class, or if you don't write to the right amount, or are detailed enough. But, you're not going to get, like, I'm not looking for anything specific. Okay, the other thing, this is new. I used to do pop quizzes, and I decided to instead to include uh, a discussion post. Uh, I'm not going to have you guys discuss with each other online, but you're just going to post a few sentences on each reading. There's an assignment for that in our assignments, which just gives me a good chance to show you. So if you go to the content page, here's the assignments. For those of you at home who were not here when I started, your syllabus is under content on the Blackboard page. Um, here's your discussion board assignment. Open. So yeah, it's just two to three short sentences. I'm not looking for a summary, per se. Like, that's not enough space for really a summary of, of a Full, you know, full article. What I'm looking for is more just like thoughts. So things that you can bring into the discussion when you come in. So each and each week, this will be due on Sunday. So that means that we have two readings for next week, Sunday at 11.59, which I'm not saying you need to do them Sunday. I realize Sunday is often a day people take off for very good reasons, right? Uh, just do it Saturday. You know, I just gave us the longest amount of time until the week started. So it's literally going week by week. So, uh, so yeah. So Sunday, um, just post it real quick, and, and then you'll be ready to go. Go ahead. You know, once you've done readings, you thought about it. One good practice might be to do your readings a little earlier in the week and just let it digest. You know, things can. If you haven't been in a sociology class before, like you know. Concepts are pretty heady in sociology, so sometimes they take a little more. Um, and yeah, then we'll be ready for the class meeting. We can hit the ground running. I don't lecture a lot, uh, as people who, once again, have been in my classes know. I have a tendency to want to chat with people about stuff, uh, rather than <laughs> sort of just stand up here and talk. Sometimes I'll fill in the gaps with lectures, you know, because, because we're using articles, stuff like that, there's sometimes gaps in what's being talked about, you know, so I'll fill in the gaps with lectures. But otherwise, when it comes to understanding the readings, I mean, they want to just interact with you guys. Okay, everyone clear on those two assignments as we move forward? Yeah. Um, so, is this one due as long as this Sunday? Yep, so this Sunday will be your first one, and then every week it will just be another one. Okay, and is it over like just one of the there's, yeah, there's two readings, so I'm looking for two to three sentences on each. Oh. So it's four to six sentences. You guys realize how little writing that is, right? Okay, so like it's not supposed to be like an arduous assignment. It's supposed to be pretty light. It's just supposed to cue us in to the answer. So, yeah, so it'll be this Sunday. Any other questions? The other thing is we're going to have a term paper due, and the term paper, the term paper. It's just going to be you exploring something related to race and ethnicity that interests you. Uh, so exploring that in more detail. And we're going to work on that you know, piece by piece. So, um, so you know, we'll start with an abstract, which is just a paragraph about what you're going to write. Then we'll move through and do, actually, I think I might change the order around. No, abstract. And then we'll do, you'll do a lit review. Meaning that you'll you'll provide a list of like what the things that you're going to write you know you're going to use as your materials. Um, then you're going to have the actual term paper, and then I'm going to do a series of revisions that you'll then have to. Do. Now, one thing I want to note that does not mean that the term paper is a rough draft. It's not. I'm not an English teacher. 
I don't want to be like correcting grammar. I, in fact, I rarely correct people's grammar. Um, I'm going to be more wanting to correct your pun tag. Actually, for people who have had me before, I may have mentioned this because I usually go around writing stuff. I used to be uh, I used to be an editor for a journal called Current Perspectives, um, and so like I'm I, I'm used to going through even like really well written things often in depth and making critiques of them. So you're going to get a lot of feedback from me. It'll be good sort of content feedback though. It's not going to be because uh, I'm not looking to to make corrections and, and teach you how to speak English. I'm not great at English. I've had to like take a lot of work. I went to like I grew up kind of poor, so I went to a really poor rural school, and I didn't know the parts of grammar until I was in graduate school taking German. <laughs> and I still think that parts of German grammar aren't English that probably aren't because I never actually learned English grammar. Um, so I never learned the parts of the sentence until I learned a different language. So, you know, I'm not a big grammarian. Um, I often. In the past, have even hired editors to go through my stuff. Um, so that's more like you know, when you're in graduate school, it's something like. Um, okay, La late assignment policy. It's thirty percent off the top when you turn something in late. Doesn't matter how long it's been late. So, uh, so usually, if you're gonna, if you procrastinate and you're at like. You have an hour to finish something and it doesn't look like you're really going to be able to do it well, don't turn it in. Take longer, work on it, and get all of your points. That's what it's kind of an encouragement to do. So I don't have like this gradated after one hour, it's this much points. After two days, it's this much points. Instead, it's just 30% off the top when it's late. Okay, lastly, we have our schedule. And uh, so yeah, if you look, you have two readings here. And you have something due, it'll be bolded. Um, the, uh, uh, I generally make everything due Friday at 11.59. So other than your discussion board, which is Sunday at 11.59, everything else is gonna be due Friday. Uh, and you'll turn that in. Right here. So this is where you turn it. This is where you go to look at your assignments. Right here. And if you know, notice the take homes are not posted as assignments, and that's because I actually draw all the questions out of our discussions, so we have to actually discuss. Um, and then, yeah, we should do this. Okay, any questions on the class structure? How many people have had sociology before? Has everyone in here had sociology before? I wanted to make one, just before we move forward, I wanted to make one content. Is it, in your sociology class, did you guys ever, ever talk about what the sociological imagination is? So this is something a lot of sociologists talk about. I think it's useful to understanding how we're probably going to move forward talking about race. So the sociological imagination is seeing yourself in time. Space, social structure. It's usually what it's referred to. This comes from somebody by the name of C. Wright Mills. He was a famous sociologist in the 50s and 60s. So C. Wright Mills talks about seeing yourself in time, space, and social structure. So what does that mean? That what that means is, is that everything in our lives, right, is somewhat dictated by when it happens, where it happens, and in what institutional context. So what's the government like? What is the economy like, et cetera, et cetera. So if you look at 
if you look at the syllabus, this is kind of how I've structured the class, is that I want us to be looking at, and thinking about race is something that happens temporally within time, and then something that happens differently in different places, and then how that changes, right, the institutions that surround race. So most people don't realize that, I, that the idea of race is actually a fairly new thing historically. Like most people have not thought about people through race through most of history. So we're going to look at, we're going to start out, and so next week, we're going to start out reading things that are like, well, how is it that people thought about differences between people? Because people have always thought about people through difference, right? They've made distinctions between groups of people, but it hasn't been on the basis of biological differences. So how is it that, what existed before is kind of our first question. And so we'll look at a couple examples of things that existed before Right, so temporarily before race, it's sort of a comparison, thing. so we can compare what, what how the how the way in which we think about people change. Then we're going to start looking at questions of the origins of it, like uh, essentially where do we see race popping up for the first time, and what sort of time, space, and structure create race. And then from there, we're going to see how, in a variety of different ways, race and ethnicity change and provide context for our lives. Right? So that's kind of our, if you want to think about it, that's our map. So I just wanted to throw that out there as an idea so that when you're sitting there reading and are like, in a class of race and ethnicity, why the heck am I reading of something about how ancient Greeks thought about people in Central Europe? <laughs> There's a reason why I'm providing that as a context. So we're going to slide into it. Um, and sometimes we're going, to talk, we're going to look at some stuff that's very pertinent specifically to the United States. We're also going to spend a lot of time looking at international things, particularly the context of colonialism and how race and colonialism coexist. Right? And we'll get into a lot of details of what that means, because really colonialism provides that sort of institutional structural context for race. Once again, just throwing that out is a, is a starting point. Okay. That was the fun part. We get to meet each other. So I'm going to want you guys to tell everyone your name, your full name. I want you to tell everyone, let's do class standing. Right, so if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Uh, I always like to know people's hometowns or other places they've lived. Or you've lived. You know, seeing you guys in space. <laughs> I didn't mean you have to laugh at it. If it wasn't funny, it wasn't funny. <laughs> um, okay, question. Uh, and what, what kind of story do we want to hear from people? The personal stories. I find that often when you guys come up with them, they're better. So, what, what do we want to hear from people? Stories about times that people did what? Last, uh, last class we talked about awkward moments. Class before that, times that we got in trouble. Uh, what do we want to talk about? What do, you want to, what do you want people to know? What do you want to know about people around you? I've had people tell stories about animals. I know it's 8 o'clock in the morning, guys. <laughs> First person to holler at something will do it. Does that make the part more pressure rather than mm -hmm. Weird or 
or annoying experiences at work or with customers? Ah, yeah. Totally this. weird. There we go. So weird or annoying work experiences. By the way, I know my handwriting is really bad. I've actually gotten this every, like every semester on evaluations, and my handwriting is really bad, which I kind of feel sad about because it's like not really something I can change at this point. You know, I'm middle aged. I write the way I write. <laughs> you know, uh, but, but you will. For people who have taken me before, you get used to it, right? Like it's like mm, learning a language. Uh, I also have a tendency to misspell words when I'm in front of people. Uh, sometimes I just can't call the spelling to mind, and I just own it. So, uh, so, don't get used to it. Anyways, okay, so uh, do you guys need some time? Or have people kind of already starting to have weird or annoying work experiences in their mind? I will take your silence as meaning that you guys are ready. So, okay, which side wants to kick us off? You or you? <laughs> Okay, come in. Um, I'm Joseph Doyle. I'm a senior and I'm from Seattle, Washington. And uh, so I work at Costco and I had like push carts this summer and uh, someone left a diaper in the uh, cart, one of the carts and I had to clean up and get it out of there. So. Diaper? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Haley Fulkers. I'm a junior and I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. And I worked at Hy-Vee this summer at the grocery store and I like got like I was like an online aisles person and one time I delivered an order and it was like three bags of like cat food and like all the like, other cat food and this lady like was telling me how she like feeds the cat food like her raccoons and how her like, raccoons would be so excited for the cat food. <laughs>
I'm Haley Random. I'm a sophomore. I'm from Fort Park, Kansas. And I nanny over the summer. <clears throat> and I was the kid that I watched, she was like five or six. I turn my back for like five minutes and I come back and she's cut off all the hairs from here to like here. It was like, <laughs> like a half bowl cut and I had to explain to her mom why her daughter has less hair than she left with. How'd she react to that? Um, the mom pretty much said, yeah, this has happened before, um, oh. a year ago, and I was like, oh, thanks for letting me know. I, was, I felt really bad, and it was fun. So. Well, it grows fast. Yeah. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Mary Stein. Um, I'm a junior. My hometown is Charleston, South Carolina. And a weird work experience. Um, so I worked at Chick-fil-A for my first job, um, and there's this lady who comes in. She's like, oh, um, I want chicken. And we're like, oh, what kind of chicken? And she was like, I don't know, just like the white and fluffy chicken. And we're like, okay. <laughs> I'm Caitlin Replinger. I'm a senior. And I'm from Jamestown, North Dakota. I guess a weird reoccurring work story. I have so much um, a dimensional word for six years in the CNA. And very often, residents will ask me if I'm their mom. I never really know how to respond to <laughs> So I'm Thomas Hill. I'm a senior. I'm from Magnolia, Texas. Um, I worked at Walmart, so this was a couple years ago. But I'm just stocking the shelves, and these two college-age guys are looking at fell beef and cheese. <laughs> and so one asks the other, you know, like, which one should we pick up? You know, one goes, well, let's get this 2% milk fell beef and cheese. Because when we're making the case, we need to add milk to it. And 2% of this is milk, so we don't have to add that much to it. <laughs> um, I'm Jordan Gibson. I'm a junior. I'm from Atchison, Kansas. Um, the weird story is so the last summer, this dude comes up to the business office to like, pay off like, a bill or whatever. And then like, we told him his amount, and then like, as he was getting his money out, he said, I don't feel so good. And we like, are you okay? Like, he turned white. And then he like, threw up. And I was just like, my computer was like, drenched. <laughs> That's really gross. <laughs> uh, my name is Nathan Fish. I'm a junior. I'm from Clovis, New Mexico. Um, I worked at a cabinet shop this summer. And we were installing an entertainment center, a massive like living room entertainment center. And both the like adults that are like the homeowners, it was on, like some mansion. Both the homeowners were working at home in separate parts, and the wife would like kept like checking in on us and she figured out she didn't like it and it was too deep or something so she started yelling from across the house at the husband the husband kept running back and forth and like he would be saying stuff like she needs to put her big girl pants on like this is getting upsetting and like this is a big old fight happening and it was like i'm just here to install this thing <laughs> really stuck in the middle and had nothing to do like couldn't change it so yeah I'm Cassandra Ledesma. I'm from Lubbock, Texas. And I used to work at the Y. And I took care of kids. And I walked in. This is my first day. And I walked in, and this kid was cussing at his mom. And he That was really bad. I think how young? He was probably a third grader. Okay. <laughs> so not big enough that it's like, you know, domestic, domestic violence. Yeah. <laughs> I swear, like little kids, like if they could, like if they were strong enough, it would be a really scary world, right? Because like little kids would just kill each other, like they totally would. <laughs> They're just not strong enough to accomplish it. Um, I'm Lauren. I'm a sophomore. I'm from Downers Grove, Illinois. Um, it's one story. I'm oh, sorry, my voice is kind of scratchy as a broccoli or something. Like um. Well, I worked at Trader Joe's, and um, we've had multiple things happen. Like we've had to call like 911 because people like do drugs in our bathroom and pass out with the door locked and like all this stuff. But my one of my favorite ones is like this lady came up to me and randomly asked me. She's like, "So how many kids do you have?" And I was like, "How many?" Like it wasn't even like what one, but she was like asking me how many I have. I was like, "Oh." <laughs> Well, I love that. I don't have any. Not at all. That, I mean, yeah. 
uh, as you get older, you get that a lot. Yeah, it's happened multiple times there, and I'm kind of concerned. I don't think I look that old. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when when you actually start looking old, it won't just be that. <laughs> like my wife and I don't have kids, and like it's like almost everybody you meet is like, so, you know, well, how old are your kids? Uh, <laughs> Non-existent. <laughs> uh, my name is Veronica Hauser. I'm a junior. Uh, I'm from Collinsville, Oklahoma, and. I don't know, I was in Nanny last summer, um, in Kansas actually, and I just had this little boy and we were like going to a restaurant or something to like, um, you know, put uh, some people and he was not happy. He was probably like, he's like five or six and he just started screaming when he said off. And it was just like in the corner like screaming, like what's that mommy? Like what do you say what's going on? Like everyone's like looking at it, I like take him outside and he probably like screamed for half an hour, just like full on. Yeah. Yeah, it was something bad. Um, my name is Alex Merrifield. I am a junior from Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Um, the only work story this summer, I was about five minutes, I worked at a gym at the fitness center, I was about five minutes from being off. And I was, there was only one other person at the front desk, and we had about 12 people come in at once to sign up. And so I had to be there for like an extra 30 minutes. It happens, but it's not the most fun experience. I'm Isaac Jenkins. I'm a fifth year, and I'm from San Antonio, Texas. And my weird work experience is I worked at a winery this past summer, so I would just say the dance moves from old people when they get enough wine. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Annie Sabrinic. Um I'm a senior, and my hometown is Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, I can't really think of like an awkward story, but I guess it's kind of weird. I worked at the Hampton Inn a couple years ago, and the manager there was from Atchison, Kansas. So she was like, yeah, like you can definitely have the job when she found out like I went to Benedictine. But I was like, this is just like such a small world, like <laughs> so bizarre. <laughs> but yeah. It's kind of like the opposite of annoying though. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing, but it's like, yeah, yeah. Unless you really didn't want to get hired. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm Jonathan Roush. I'm a junior. Uh, my hometown is Lawrence, Kansas. Uh, weird story was uh, this summer uh, I worked at Informatic, which basically just means I built garage doors. So, uh, I was working 12 hour shifts and it was a night shift, so we got a lot of crazies over there. So I ended up working uh, 12 hours with this crazy guy cussing me out, threatening me. But yeah, that was pretty fun. Um, I'm Gil Keegan, I'm a junior. I'm from Snowflake, Seattle, Washington. And uh, I used to lifeguard. And where, where north? You don't know? Um, like Snohomish. Okay, I don't think I know that place. Yeah. <laughs> um, I spent but, a month in Port Townsend. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Um, when I was like sixteen, I think I was lifeguarding, and I used to do like the early morning shift, like five a.m. And so it's all just little old people who are doing their water aerobics, and a lot of the times they'll walk back and forth in kind of the shallow area. And when I got to like rotate with the lifeguard that was there. Um, there were these two like old ladies, probably both in their 70s or something, and they were both screaming at each other. And I guess they had bumped elbows and almost knocked one of the other over. And he was like, yeah, so she hit like her, I guess, with her elbow when they walked by. She was afraid she was going to fall. So they want to call the police. Um, I'm going to rotate. Have fun. And I was like, um, I don't know what to do. <laughs> but we resolved it. We didn't end up calling the police, but I don't think they ever came back. So. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I'm, you can really call me anything. I say this in all my classes. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, my name is Dr. Nicholas Hellman. Like I introduced myself, but you can call me Nick. You can call me whatever you want. Uh, whatever makes you the most comfortable, I'm cool with. Um, my standing's not really relevant. Hometown, I'm from Saginaw, Michigan, originally. Uh, but I've lived quite a few other places. Uh, Richmond, Virginia, Knoxville, Tennessee, Mankato, Minnesota. Here. So, um, weird or annoying work experiences. I worked in a, so to give you some context, 
Uh, Saginaw, it used to be a really rough city. Uh, it was always in the top five for like murder per capita, violent crime per capita. Uh, so if you think about like any stereotypes you have, like so, you know, Detroit's here, Flint's here, Saginaw's here. And anything you think about is, is stereotypes of Detroit, that's basically what Saginaw's like. So uh, I worked at a pickle factory near Saginaw, and I worked midnight, the, uh, midnight to 6 a.m. I believe it was. It's been a while, but whatever an eight-hour shift is. Um, and like, so basically, the only people who worked there were people who had been in prison. <laughs> so it was a really rough kind of environment. That, that was so it was people who had been in prison, and then it was people who worked in the pickle fields during the day, and then at night would uh, so a lot of like uh, like sort of migrant worker populations, which is a great experience. Like uh, uh, you know, I re it was really. Interesting to interact and see the see the world through people's eyes, which isn't isn't the annoying part. The annoying part is because of the prison context. There was a lot of white supremacists who really didn't like white people who <laughs> interact with the immigrant workers, and so uh, uh, I used to have to get walked to my car every night by other people to keep from getting like beat up, uh, which is really strange. Um, so that's my that's probably my most annoying work. Uh, but I got paid $16 an hour, which at the time was like minimum wage was only seven. So it plus time and a half, and I almost always got it. So I was like, uh, feeling like I was really making a bank for this. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Any final questions for me or anyone else before we end syllabus day? Okay. Have a great week. See you guys Tuesday. We'll hit the ground running.